Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com bringing you another fly tying pattern this week. And this week I'm revising an old pattern of mine. Well, not a real old pattern because it hasn't been around real long. It's the lantern fly. Um, the reason why I'm revising this pattern is because I saw one finally hit the stream in my area. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of a disclaimer here real quick because I always get asked this question. Are trout eating the lantern flies? Yes, some are, some aren't. So it's kind of a 50-50 kind of thing. Um, guys in the areas where the lantern flies have been established and are really heavy, they'll say that on one stream the trout are eating them and you go to the next stream and the trout won't even look up at them. So it's kind of a weird thing. I don't know why um, some fish will eat them, some fish won't. And there's no rhyme or reason to why they do it or why they don't do it. So. I don't know on that, but I do know that some fish are eating them and guys are catching fish on them. I've had repeat customers with my old pattern. Reason for revising this pattern is because I was on the stream, seen one hit the water and my old pattern was more of a spent wing style with the wings flared out like it's, it's dead and um, it's given up and the wings are out on it. This pattern, a lot easier to tie, really quick once you get all the setup work done on it. And uh, this one that I saw hit the stream, by the way, no fish took it, but there wasn't a single fish looking up that day. I didn't see one fish feed off the top. But when that fly hit the water, it rode tent wing like a caddis, and it kept those wings up going, going down the stream. So when I saw that, I was like, I'm tying my pattern wrong. I had to figure out how to redo it. So to do it, I'm going to have you go back to save some time in this video. I'm going to have you go back and check out a video from two weeks ago, my CDC caddis pattern. Um, that's how we're making the wings on it. It's the Sefet Nikashevic pattern, um, how he does his wings. We're going to use those same wings, except we're going to color them up for the lantern fly. To color them up, I'm going to use two markers. Um, black one to make the spots and the back on it. And then on the inside, we're going to use just any light colored pink. This one actually is petal pink, I believe was the color of it. Use any light pink color just to get a little bit of red shining through. If you, if you Google an image of a lantern fly, you'll see those gray wings have a little bit of that red underwing showing through it. So I just hit it with a little bit of pink, give it a couple scribbles just to give it a tint to it. Um, Enough talking here guys, here you're going to see a picture of the fly in the vise, then the material is to tie it. Okay. Here you see this cool looking lantern fly pattern in the vise. Very cool, actually pretty easy to tie once you get the setup process done. And um, it's a lot of fun to tie too. So, But before I get into tying it, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through and do some setup stuff. Show you how I prepare to tie this fly before I actually get into tying it. Because once you have all your setup done, it goes a lot smoother and a lot quicker. So one thing we're going to use in this is a marabou feather. This is going to be your underwing for underneath your caddis. And um, I like to take a nice red one just to get your underwing here. And what I like to do is I like to strip the fibers back and I can actually get like three underwings out of this. So I'm going to take the tip of it, pull them out and trim off just the tips. And I'll set them aside. That's going to be one underwing. And then I'm going to split this in half. You can see there, I just split about half of the feathers out of there. Cut this. This will be another underwing. And there's my third underwing. So when you pull all these fibers back together, there you got a nice underwing for it. So I can get usually two to three out of one marabou feather. So that's how I do my underwing for it. For the wing, the actual wing on it, I'm going to show you I'm going to have you go back to my old CDC caddis video. I mean, here's the picture of it up here. I want you to go back to that video, go to the end of it, watch the whole thing. It's a great pattern. It catches a lot of fish, but go to the end of it. And I show you how to tie these wings on it. So what you're going to do is you're going to, if you want to make the wing, you're going to have this wing, you're going to cut it out 
and then as I show you in that video you're gonna cut that heart shape out to make your wing you're gonna fold it in half cut out that heart shape and when you open it up it's gonna look like this that's gonna be your wing for this fly right here then we're gonna take the two markers the black and the pink and with the black what you want to do is go find yourself some good reference but you want to take and just put dots all over the top but not too many you can see here it's kind of random get good reference look it up on the internet put dots on the top and then on the back i flip it over to the back and you can see the black stripe around the back of it i just put a little black rib here you can see it here let me get out one here so i put the dots on the top flip it over put the black on the bottom so the black shines through just a little bit less on the top and then the last thing i do is i take a light pink marker and that light pink i take and i just scribble you can see it's not solid i just scribbled lines all over it and it shows through lets that red underwing show through the pattern a little bit better so that's how i prep that i also take some flex floss and cut a whole bunch of flex floss to about an inch and a half long i would say so that's my setup process for this fly oh the other thing we do we have to tie the bodies for the bodies i'm using some five millimeter foam and what i do is i take and cut this into three quarter inch strips so i'll cut this you see i got lines on this side here three quarter inch lines i'll take them on my paper cutter and cut them or i can cut them out by hand either one i cut out three quarter inch wide strips then that three quarter inch wide strips i cut into three eighths inch pieces so from the three quarter inch strip i cut out a three eighth inch piece okay so that gives me a little rectangle three quarter by three eighths from that i cut that into a little like old school casket case okay i cut this pattern out of it here then when i cut that pattern out what i do let me pop this out of the vise what I do once I get this pattern cut out is I take my scissors and I just cut at an angle on the edge here. So you see I just trim around and round off the edges of this the whole way around here. And that just rounds out, makes a nice round body. There you can see I did it on one side there's the other side that I didn't cut yet. So the one side's uh, cornered, the other side's round. Trim the other side off, and you got yourself a nice little teardrop shape. Okay, that's how I make my body. So now I have all my setup done on this fly. Let's get into tying it. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that little teardrop shape, and I'm just going to put my 718 fire hole size 12 hook through that teardrop and you can see i put it through the eye ran it back and brought it out in the butt section of it there what i'm going to do next is i'm going to slide that up towards the eye push it up towards the eye and i'm going to come in with some 140 denier yellow thread i'm going to start it out on the back there and wrap it back to the bend of the hook and trim off the butt section this is going to give us a rib on the body and if you'd see a dead one if you see a picture of a dead one on the internet you'll see it has a yellow rib to it so what we're going to do is we're going to slide that backwards over top of the thread you wrapped on there and then we're going to start to loosely semi loosely make a rib up through here pull it in a little bit but don't like clinch it down tight tight and just make a nice ribbed body up through here and when you get up to the eye there you want to stay back about two good eye lengths behind but you want to smooth that out so make a nice transition there for your head and uh, i'm going to bring it back up to the eye with my thread because i'm going to come in with my next color thread and that is some 140 gray brown and this is going to be the gray grayish head to match the wings and this is just i'm just going to tie off that yellow thread with it so i don't have to waste time doing a uh, half hitch with it so just tie it off cut my yellow thread off and uh, wrap this back the rest of the way next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring our legs which are some black flex, flex floss and like i said this is about an inch and a half long piece and i'm going to tie one on in, on each side so I'm just going to set it in about the middle there, tie it on on the side, 
On my first pattern, on my original pattern, I used to knot these, and I don't think it's worth the time to take to knot them. Um, fish aren't going to care if the wings, if the legs are bent or not. They're not going to concentrate on that enough. So next thing we're going to do is tie one in on the other side and tie it down on the side, twist it around there, get it where you need it to be. So you have one going down each side. Stopping at the eye, there you can see, got a nice separated. And then we're going to tie one in the middle, so it has six legs. So for the one in the middle, I'm just going to set it on top, loosely tie it down, and then figure eight over top of it, get it where I want it. Oops. Sorry about my big fat fingers in the way there. couple wraps once I get it on there where I like it like that I like that a lot so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the underwing on this fly for the underwing I'm going back to that red marabou so for the red marabou this one you can see is the tips I'm gonna pinch all those tips together and the two things I can do is I can take all those tips bring them right out I want it flush with the end of my fly right like that I can tie that down okay I'm gonna show you I think that looks the best and is the cleanest, but when I said there I use three pieces, I use the big section of marabou too. This is an underwing and it's not really meant to show through, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bottom section and I'm just going to trim it off because honestly it's just to give that red undertone to it, it's not to be pretty. This fly is not a show fly, it's not meant to be pretty, it's meant to catch fish. So I'm going to tie that clump down on top, cut off the butt section there, and then try to cover up a little bit of that what's remaining with your thread. And then I'm going to bunch it all together, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut it off right the same length as that tail. Now that's fine, it doesn't look good, I know it doesn't matter though, because it's going to be underneath the fly. So, last thing we're going to do is we're going to take that wing we made. Get one out here. And here's one of the, this is one I already had pre-made, like I said, like I'm going to tell you here in a little bit. I'm going to sell these in the shop if you don't want to take, take the time to make them. But they come like this. We're going to fold them in half. And when I do these, I always make them too long. So, that's too long for this pattern. I like to trim them up. I want this wing to just cover... You can see here, I'm just covering the tip of my marabou with the center of the wing. So I don't want this overpowering, but you look here, it sticks out past the eye. So I want to trim it back here about where my fingernail is. That's where I want to trim this to. So I'm just going to take this feather, cut the edge off, shorten it up as you see here. And we're going to set this on top. And there, I like it right like that. We're going to set it on top, tie it down. Make a couple wraps behind the legs and then a couple in front. And then you can figure eight a couple more in there just to secure it if you want. And then we're going to whip finish this. And we're almost done here. Like I said, this is an easy fly to tie if you do all the setup work. It goes really fast once you have it all set up. So I'm just going to trim a couple of those off and then I'm going to hit it with some solar res bone dry to smooth out this head and secure my thread wraps there. There we go. Those legs are just a hair long. So we're going to trim them up some. And I like that. There you go. There's a cool looking lantern fly that doesn't take long to tie once you do all the prep work for it. Okay guys, I hope you like that pattern. It's a really cool pattern to tie. It looks really great. It's fun to tie, but there's a lot of setup work to it. I'm going to, to help if you don't want to do a lot of that setup work, I'm going to sell some wings in the shop. Um, you can get them online from the store. I'm going to sell like a 12 pack of wings that you can buy already pre-cut 
and um, ready to go, pre-colored up. All you gotta do is trim them to the size of your fly when you get them. I mean, I cut them a little bit longer and then you just trim them down to the size you want them to fit on your fly. So it'll be a really easy way if, you know, you just wanna tie a dozen of them up to have in your box. You don't wanna go through all the work, buy the extra stuff, um, you know, the rest of the stuff you probably have laying around to tie it. So uh, it's a cool different way to do a lantern fly like I said, some fish are eating them, some aren't, but you can always use it for a dry dropper too. It's going to be a natural looking dry dropper. It's a bug that's floating down the stream. If you have them in your area, use it as a dry dropper. It floats great. So have fun tying guys. It was a lot of fun for me coming up with this pattern, experimenting with it. And, uh, you know, I've had a lot of interest in my old lantern fly pr pattern. And so I had to come up with a new one just to keep things fresh. If you like it, if you want to meet, see me tie it in person, I'm going to be tying it next week at the symposium at the International Fly Tying Symposium in New Jersey. So if you're in the area, stop out and see me. Stop into my booth, pick one up if you want. And uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. Be more than happy to answer any questions you have or um, suggestions you have for me. So. Anything else you need, you can always find it, like always, at wholesingerslyshop.com. Thanks for watching, guys. We love all the support that you give to the shop and our channel. We, can't, we appreciate it so much, we can't thank you enough. So until next week, when I bring you another video, I'm Sean Holsinger.